All right, this is One Last Midnight. Welcome back to another episode of Astroneer. In today's episode, we're going to look at train automation. Now, by no means is this a complete automation guide, but it'll cover enough of the train automation to be able to get your creative juices flowing. In today's helpful guide, we're going to look at three different scenarios in which you can set up some train automation. The first scenario I want to look at is point to point train automation. Very simple. You need to have a little bit of imagination because what I'm going to show you can be set up many different ways. So at one point we have some sort of resource. You need to think of this as the input portion of the line. This could be either an auto extractor. It could be coming from a process like a chemistry lab. It can be coming from an atmosphere condenser. Anything that produces something, this is going to be your input portion of the line. On this other side over here is going to be the output portion of your line. So this is where your stuff is going to be delivered and you're going to either store it or do something else with it. Very simple point to point track from point A to point B back to point A again. Now on this line, we happen to have one rail car and on the rail car, we have a simple storage sensor. If we attach that storage sensor back to the rail car and activate the rail car. What will happen when it goes to the input area, it'll fill up the rail car. The sensor will activate. We have the sensor set to full or empty, by the way. Once it gets to the end of the line, it'll stop. The auto arm will unload the storage that's on there. The storage sensor will fire again because it's empty, sending it back to the input area. And this will run forever. Way you can stop that is you can just simply stop the cart and that'll break the communication because all it's doing is sending a signal to tell it to start the cart again. You can speed this process up by putting down a rail engine and it will deliver the goods even faster. If you happen to do that, you definitely want to make sure that your pickup reticle is going to cover the entire width of the train. Otherwise, it's not going to fill it correctly or it's not going to pick up the items correctly. In the case that uh, we didn't have it turned, it, it didn't pick up the first two on the engine. But since we altered the auto arm pickup area, maybe it will now pick up all of the items, deliver it into the storage, and then send the train on its way. This is a great example for point-to-point -point pickup and delivery. If you need more storage, you can easily put a larger storage container. This could be either a resource canister or just some simple storage or a combination of the two. Regardless, it'll fill all items up on the train. And as long as your storage sensor is connected to the train, it will assess any storage that's sitting on the train and activate it when it's full or empty. So as you can see, this is a nice way to turn around and transport items from point A to point B. Let's look at a more sophisticated example. In this example here, let's pretend that this is going to be my base. And this is uh, my storage facility. I I'll possibly have some smelters, some chemistry labs, whatever around this area. But this is going to be the main storage location. I have a station that happens to be set to stop all trains modes and then unload the stopped cars. So when a train gets here fully loaded, it's going to unload. My auto arms will pick them up, put them into the storage. And then when it's complete, it will go on its merry way. I happen to have a sensor here, a button repeater and a delay repeater. The delay repeater is set to max. And the pin is pinned into the railway station on this little tab right here. This tells the railway station that once it gets a signal to send the car to the next destination. And the next destination happens to be another rail station, which is set up to stop all cars and then load the stopped cars. 
Over here, I have an extractor with an auto arm that is filling up the storage on this rail station. And again, I have the same concept of a button repeater and a delay repeater to tell it to go to the next station. My next station is another location with an extractor. Same configuration as this last one that I just explained. And then it goes on to another location, another location, another location, until it gets back to the main storage area. So let's go ahead and we'll watch this in action. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start it up. It's going to go to this station, fire off the sensor. There's nothing there. It's done. The sensor timer's up. It's going to move on to its next station, which is over here. It's going to pick up the goods. It's going to fire off this little sensor. It's going to move on to the next station. Grab its next load. Again, fire the sensor. Move on again. All of these are controlled and moving on with these little button repeaters and delay repeater sensors. Continues to keep moving on. It picks up its last load finally, and then makes it back over to the station over here, in which it unloads everything. And then my auto arms go and start sorting items. And this will continue on forever. Unfortunately, there's a draw distance, so if I get too far away, it looks like it stops. But it's not stopping, it's continuing on. And as long as there's things to pick up, it'll pick it up. And if there's not things to pick up, it won't pick up. Now, in order to get it to stop putting into the front of the engine, you can put some other items in there. Once you have two items in the front of the engine, it will no longer place any kind of resource in there. So put yourself in a battery or a light or something uh, just, that, just so that it doesn't fill those spaces up because it doesn't seem to unload those spaces when it gets to the main unloading area. Okay, while testing this process out, I found a little bit of a problem. It seems that while the train is out of draw distance, way far over here, this button repeater and delay repeater do not fire. So it seems to be a problem with the station and it not calling or doing the correct thing. So there's a, a workaround for this. So I, what I didn't say and I didn't explain on the station was the station, like the rail pole, also has a pin that you can activate. As soon as a train comes in, this pin fires a signal. And so that is what is activating this button and delay repeater. But in the case of the draw distance, that never gets fired. So there's a workaround. What we can actually do is we can take this button repeater and delay repeater and put it on the ground and then use the rail activation segment and we'll create a pin and then we'll come over here and we'll pin it to this button repeater. And so what will happen is the train will come in and this will fire and then it'll turn around and it'll segment, send a signal to the station to send it on to the next area. So we're gonna do this for each one, and then I'll show you the train moving the way that it's supposed to be moving. All right, I got them all set up. It's unfortunate I had to do this, but you know, you can see that I've got it. Uh, the activation segment going from the pylon all the way down, or from the rail post all the way down to this button repeater uh, delay timer. Let's go ahead and start the train up. And then I should be able to see the train come back to me, which is going to be the huge thing. I don't want to go over there because if you're next to the train, it runs just fine. But you can see off in the distance over here, there was a little artifact of the train. It happens to do with draw distance. For some reason, the train is not getting drawn. And I think it's getting pulled out of memory. I, I don't know what's happening, but it's not working as expected. But we should see the train come into view over here soon. Sorry, my hat is uh, smoking too much. <laughs> there, there the train is, actually. You can see it over here. It just rendered in. But then we should see it again. There it is. 
So now it's working regardless of the draw distance. It's going around in a circle and doing what it's supposed to be doing. So that's a way to get around this problem, this little defect that I found with the uh, draw distance and, and setting up the trains like this automation. Now let's talk about some things that you can possibly do with the rail posts. Now the rail posts also happen to have some sort of activation sensor on it so once something passes through this area it'll send a signal and in this case it'll set off the foghorn all right i want to give you somewhat more of a more realistic use case and other than just setting off the horn for the post uh activation so in this case i've got a bunch of auto arms over here and i don't want the auto arms to always be on there's no reason for it to be on all the time because it's sucking up power so the only time I want it on is when a train pulls into the station and I want to turn them off when the train leaves the station. So in this case, I could take the post activator, hook it up to a button repeater, and that'll turn the arms off. And then when the trains pass this particular point over here, I want them to shut off. I might have to put down another segment and activate it here like this. But when the train rolls in, and here it comes, it's going to turn around, send a signal, turns all the auto arms on, and they're going to start unloading and doing their unloading process. And then when the train goes by, it's going to shut the auto arms off. Now, in this case, it's not going to really empty out all of the storage. You, we could either fix this problem one of two ways. We can have the delay on the repeater be longer, put some sort of count in there, maybe count for two or three of these uh to be able to, to let it sit here longer so that it unloads or we can put in more auto arms so that it picks up multiples quicker but that's how you can do some sort of you know real world scenario for these posts you're going to activate some sort of process whether it be arms whether it be machines it, it could be anything it could be to a song who knows but you're going to use that as it passes through the post to turn on and shut off various things so that's an example of how you can set up multiple stops on a rail line using the stations and also using the rail posts for automation let's go to our final example in this example i'm using the rail station to go to point to point just like I did in the previous one over there, but I'm using two rail stations, one to tell me to load the goods, pretend that this is an extractor or some sort of storage. This is our input, and our output will be to some sort of final destination, whether it be a storage or some sort of building pieces that do some sort of processing. What I wanted for this use case was I wanted to only call the car when the storage is completely full and then when the storage gets empty have the storage sit there and wait until it gets called by this station when it's completely full again so let me show you how this works i'm going to go ahead and turn this on it's going to load up the storage as soon as the storage is completely loaded, it'll send a signal to call for the car. It will then load up the rail car, fire off another signal that sends the rail car back. Then the rail car will unload and it will be stored into storage. In the meantime, this will reload back up again, and once it's completely filled, it'll call the rail car one more time. The way that this is set up is pretty simple. There is a storage sensor on the storage on the station set to full or empty. It then has a pin that goes back to the station that calls the car, and it also has a pin going to a delay repeater back to the return that sends the car out. So when it's completely full, it will call the car off of this pin. It'll also fire this, but this won't do anything because there's no vehicle here. And then when it becomes empty, it'll fire the sensor again. And what'll happen is, is this one will be ignored because there's a car here 
And this was the one that'll that'll turn around and send the car off. So there's a little bit of a different configuration. I didn't want cars going around in a circle in this case. I only wanted my rail car to show up when my resource storage is completely full at this station and then go back and deliver it once it has a full load. So I, my use case for this was this is an auto extractor and the auto extractor is gathering. It's putting resources on the station. And then once the station is completely filled, it calls the car to go then deliver it back to wherever I want to deliver it to my base or to some sort of processing location. There is a little bit of a trick with using these pins to tell the rail to go from one direction to another. And that is it only works if you have rail extending off of the station. So you can see on both of these stations, I have one little rail post off to the side. And that is the only way you can get this to work. You can't have a point to point from station to station and be able to use these pin areas right here to tell the car to either go this direction or to tell the car to go this direction. I hope that makes sense because that took me a little while to figure out how to get this thing to work. All right, well, that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the rail automation. Look, it's a very basic covering of rail automation, but it shows you how to use the pins on the station. It shows you how to use the pins on the rail, and you can come up with any kind of idea on how to transport goods from one location to another, whether it is a complete circle like I showed you here in the big one, or if it's a point to point without stations or point to point with stations. I will look at automation with junctions at a later time because that is a whole nother animal being able to switch tracks and being able to tell it to go from one station to another station or from one point to another point with junctions and multiple cars. So look for that video soon. I appreciate you guys being here. If you like the video, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Would love to have you in the community. If you want to follow me on any of my social media, you can find the links in the description below and make sure to hit that notification bell. That way, you know when I go live and when I post new videos. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.